Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kyra Simon, it is time to brawl, and it's also time for us to talk about new gadgets and best builds for those respective brawlers. We're going to be talking about B, Daryl, Sprout, and Nita in that order. Now two of those gadgets are going to be released this weekend, and you guys get to pick which ones they are. Just head over to Brawl Stars' Twitter account and there will be a poll, and from there, the two highest rated gadgets will be released this weekend. So after you watch this video, go vote for which gadget you want the most. Let's start out with B because she is beautiful. Bee's new gadget is Rattled Hive. She unleashes three angry bees that circle away from her, and the bees deal 370 damage up close, but the damage actually ramps up all the way to 1,000 damage each, and that means it is possible for them to deal 3,000 damage to a single target. And even if Bee uses this ability against enemies up close, as long as they get hit by all three projectiles, they're taking them a minimum of 1,110 damage, which could be exactly what she needs to take them out. Now, this ability can also deal damage to more than one target, which makes it a great option if she wants to control a certain part of the map. However, each of the bee projectiles will not deal damage to the same target more than once. What's cool is that the bees are not stopped by walls, which means that she'll be able to use it against throwers or even turrets like Penny's super that would normally be difficult for bee to reach. Now the bees always circle around bee perfectly, so she can control kind of where they go by moving because the center of the circle will be moved along with her. But as they circle her, they progressively get further and further away, which makes it kind of difficult to control without some practice. Practice, and it's also going to make it easier for enemies to be able to uh, predict where they're going to be moving as well. As you can see with this super satisfying gameplay, the bees cover a massive radius around B, but they still don't actually even come close to reaching her normal attack range. No matter how much HP you have, you do not want to get hit by 3000 damage if you can avoid it. But I think that skilled players actually won't have a difficult time avoiding it with some practice. This gadget is very predictable at a distance, and I think that B is going to have a hard time fully utilizing it because of that. B's original gadget is Honey Molasses where when she uses it, a beehive gets placed that spreads out honey around the field around it and that slows enemies that get too close until she either places another one or that one gets destroyed by the enemy. I think that there are times when bee's newest gadget, Rattled Hive, will be the better gadget to have, but I think that Honey Molasses is likely the better option in a competitive match most of the time. It's a better counter to targets close up who are chasing bee, it's really annoying to deal with if you don't have a thrower, and it gives bee a lot of added control where she needs it most. Bee's first star power is insta B load. This makes it so that B's supercharged attack will recharge if she misses the last supercharged attack. In other words, you get two chances to hit someone with 3080 damage with a single attack, and that is a lot of damage. B's second star power is Honey Coat, which prevents B from dying one time per match. She'll survive with one HP from a shot that would have killed her, and she'll be immune from damage for a very short period of time so that she can escape. The fact that this works only one time per match makes it a worse option over her insta b-load star power but it is the better star power if you're playing her in showdown anywhere else though insta b-load is the better star power for b's best build and this is what i consider to be b's best build honey molasses gadget insta b-load star power and if you like skins i prefer the mega beetle b by a long shot up next is daryl and then we'll talk about sprout daryl's newest gadget is tar barrel when daryl uses this ability he creates a slowing area around him for four seconds this means that if daryl's able to get close to an enemy brawl all he has to do to guarantee that he can reach them and kill them is activate this gadget, which is really strong for Daryl because he does a lot of damage up close. But it does not have a very big range, so he will have to get pretty close to them. In order to overcome that, Daryl can obviously activate this right after he rolls onto them, or he can actually activate it before he rolls to further guarantee that they will be slowed. After all, the ability does last for an entire 4 seconds, and Daryl doesn't roll for a very long time. One thing to note is that the ability does work on the other side of walls, so if an enemy is playing like merry-go-round around a cactus or something like that, Daryl can use this to catch them and kill them. This gadget is pretty simple, it's very straightforward, but it is very strong. Daryl's original gadget is Recoiling Rotator. When he he activates this, he spins and sprays a ton of shots that each deal 400 damage and recharge his super by 25%. So only four projectiles are required for him to completely charge up his super. Now most of the time, Daryl will only hit one and two projectiles on an enemy with this gadget, so the damage is pretty easy to ignore. It can be used against a large target to deal a lot of damage, but even in heist, the likelihood of pulling that off against the safe, which is not moving at all, is very slim. 
The biggest benefit to this gadget is Daryl being able to quickly recharge his super against a target that is further away from him so that he can then super onto them or he can use this on targets that are close up and then recharge a super so he can quickly get away safely. Now Daryl already automatically charges his super and it's very easy for him to charge his super with his attacks so I definitely think that his newest gadget Tar Barrel is going to be the better option for him. The slow means that Daryl will get more kills and it'll also make it easier for him to land shots and recharge up his super. Which which is why I think it's the obvious choice most of the time. Daryl's first star power is Steel Hoops. With his star power equipped, Daryl shields 90% of damage for 0.9 seconds while he is supering. This pretty much makes Daryl invincible while he's rolling, but its usefulness is very limited to that very short period of time. And during that time, Daryl's already really hard to hit, which is why I think that the better star power for Daryl is his second star power most of the time. Daryl's second star power is Rolling Reload. When Daryl has the star power equipped and he uses his super he doubles his reload speed for the next five seconds. This gives Daryl an insane amount of firepower after each super, which is why enemies need to be very careful about a Daryl rolling up onto them. And this star power, along with Daryl's newest gadget, Tar Barrel, means that a single target is going to really struggle against Daryl in a 1v1 situation. So this is what I would consider to be Daryl's best build. His Tar Barrel gadget, his rolling reload star power, and my personal favorite skin for Daryl, Dumpling Daryl. Up next is Sprout, and then we'll talk about Nita. Sprout's newest gadget is Transplant. When Sprout has a super wall on the ground, he can activate this gadget to destroy his current wall, but then his super will instantly be fully charged again so that he can throw it out and basically reuse his super, right? And this is a really cool star power because it means that Sprout can essentially get four uses out of a single super if you activate this gadget the moment before his wall gets destroyed normally. And like I said, this effectively allows you to use one super for times because you can destroy the hedge and activate the gadget well before the cooldown timer for the gadget runs out. One thing to note is that if Sprout happens to have two supers on the ground when using this gadget, both of the supers will be destroyed, not just the first one. A workaround if you want to have two walls out there is to activate this gadget after Sprout throws his second super, but before it lands. That way, the original super will get destroyed and the second one will land and create the second super. Then you'll have the super recharge and you can throw down another wall and it's just Really cool. Sprout's original gadget is Garden Mulcher. Sprout uses this gadget to consume a bush in order to restore 2,000 health. This is a very straightforward ability that is very strong, especially on maps where Sprout is going to be hanging around a lot of bush. Sprout's first star power is Overgrowth. With this star power, after 5 seconds, Sprout's next attack will explode with a larger explosion radius. This effectively increases Sprout's potential range and makes it much easier for Sprout to hit his enemy targets. Sprout's second star power is Photosynthesis. With this star power, Sprout shields incoming damage by 30% whenever he is standing on a bush and also leaves for the second after he leaves the the bush as well. That means the enemies have to deal 6,000 worth of damage to take Sprout out if he is shielding at all. This is an incredibly powerful star power on maps where there's enough bush for Sprout to take advantage of it, and it's especially powerful when used in combination with his Garden Mulcher gadget because the 2,000 healing actually is a little bit more like 2.8 thousand healing because that's how much additional damage an enemy will have to do in order to take Sprout out. Sprout has two really good gadgets and two really good star powers, so its best build is kind of tough to decide. Sprout's newest transplant gadget and overgrowth star power are really good, so I can't ignore them, but on bushy maps, Sprout has a huge advantage with its garden mulcher gadget and photosynthesis star power, and I think that it's safe to say that this is Sprout's best build. As for skins, I really like Lunar Sprout. It's kind of cute and fun and, and it's new. Finally, we have Nita. Nita's newest gadget is Faux Fur. When she activates this ability, her bear will shield for 35% of damage for the next three seconds. That means that an enemy will have to deal the equivalent of 8,615 damage in order to take the bear out in those three seconds while it's being shielded. And that is a lot of damage, but it will require some good timing from Nita in order to activate the shield at the right time. Now, Nita's original gadget is Bear Paws. When Nita uses this gadget, after a delay, her bear will slam the ground and stun enemies close to it. This offers a lot of control and recently got a buff making it so that her bear can actually move while it's activating it, which makes it a lot more viable than in the last meta. Nita's first star power is Bear With Me. Nita recovers 500 health whenever her bear hits an enemy, and whenever Nita deals damage, her bear regains 500 health as well. Now, the healing is not instant. It does take some time in order for it to travel between the two different characters, so keep that in mind. Nita's second star power is Hyper Bear. This makes Nita's attack much faster and makes it so it can deal a lot of damage very quickly. 
This is especially useful in Heist because the safe cannot run away from the bear, but in other modes where enemies typically stay away from the bear and don't get hit by it before they take it out, it's not as effective. And that's why Anita's best build really depends a lot on what you're playing. If you are playing Heist, I think her best build is going to be her Foe Fur Gadget paired with her Hyper Bear Star Power. This is going to give her bear more survivability while it's wailing down on the safe and will guarantee more damage before the, dare the bear dies. Outside of Heist, I'm not actually certain which build I would recommend, right? If you do want to stick with her Hyper Bear Star Power, which I typically don't outside of Heist, make sure that you do use her Bear Paws Gadget so that Nita's bear is more likely to take out enemies after they're stunned. Typically though, enemy players do a really good job at staying away from the Nita bear so the bear with me is the better star power overall because it keeps the bear alive so that the enemies are consistently wasting ammo and that way Nita is typically safe from enemy fire. And in that case, I think her newest gadget, Faux Fur, would be the better build. If I had to pick only one gadget and only one star power, I'd probably go with her Faux Fur gadget and her Hyper Bear star power and then focus on playing Nita in Heist. Outside of Heist, I think the build is really just going to come down to personal preference and play style. But when it comes to skins, I definitely think that the Shiba Nita skin is the best. 100% of the time. <laughs> and those are the best builds and newest gadgets for B, Daryl, Sprout, and Nita. And I want to know which gadgets you are most excited for. And feel free to let me know if you disagree with any of these best builds that I, I made in this video. For these best build videos, I typically go way more in depth into all the different abilities and things like that. I know you guys probably like that. However, we have to fit four of them into one video, so... Oh, maybe a lot of you guys appreciate the short and sweet. Let me know, actually. I want, I'm curious to know which, you, which kind of format you prefer. Either way, though, make sure you guys subscribe for more high-quality Brawl Stars videos like this one, including four more gadgets that I have not covered in sneak peek videos yet. Supercell's like, hey, Karos, you got to wait until we say it's okay. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll wait. So stick around for that. <laughs> Use Kukaros at the Brawl Stars shop. And for now, this is Karos. I'm ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.